The Ephesians passage began, So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. There's a similarity to those words and the words of a character named Burley Coulter, who once said, the way we are, we are members of each other, all of us, everything. The difference ain't in who is a member and who is not, but in who knows it and who don't. Now, Burley is one of my favorite characters of Wendell Berry. Burley spoke those words in a book called The Wild Birds, and he was explaining what he and, by extension, Wendell Berry meant by the membership. If you've never read Wendell Berry, I recommend him, especially his fiction, the stories about a place called Port William, Kentucky. All those stories are about this membership by which they convey the bonds of their community and their sense of belonging to each other within the geography of the place that they call home. The membership consists of any person who recognizes his or her place among and responsibility to the well-being. The well-being of the land, in their day of the animals, and of course the people. Now, it's been a while since I've referenced Wendell Berry from the pulpit. He's the writer and farmer from Henry County, Kentucky, I so much admire. He explains elsewhere that he drew his concept of membership from a source that you'll recognize. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, St. Paul wrote, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so is Christ. And so we come full circle when we remember how the writer of the Ephesians picked up that theme, again in the first verse of today's epistle reading, so then putting away falsehood, let us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Now the passage that Danita read starts out, so then, which reminds us that we're continuing a series of well, admonitions and words of guidance that precede this in the chapter, chapter 4, words that we read last Sunday in worship. In those words are the admonition to take up the new way of life and even to become that new self that has been granted by Jesus Christ. Now, those are powerful and eloquent claims, but they raise several questions. What exactly does all of this mean? How does this new life look? And how will I know if I'm living? What follows the words, so then, sounds like something that one of Wendell Berry's characters could have said in one of his books. Or perhaps they sound like the Bible come to life. Let me read the passage again. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption, Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And then these final two verses from the next chapter. Therefore be imitators of God 
as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice to God. Now, if you know the writings of Paul, you recognize that elsewhere he has encouraged us to imitate Christ. Or in some places he says, imitate Paul as he imitates Christ. But here, the admonition is to imitate God. That's a different, different image. What's called for here is imitation of the particular character of God's love toward humankind. A love seen clearly in the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. Now because of where the scriptures have gone week after week this summer, a theme in my preaching has been the meaning of membership. Membership in the church is meant to be this membership in one another. Loving the Lord, loving neighbor. When we join the church, we don't actually join a building or an institution or an organization and really not even a belief system or a set of doctrines. Those come in order after we join some people, after we join a church family and join in a purpose, a mission, a way and a truth and a life which draw us to Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. On the bulletin cover this morning, below the words of Scripture are words called the great ends of the church. And that's a hundred year old witness of the church, the Presbyterian church, about what we're about, who we are. And I hope you've read through those. Even though they're 100 years old, they speak powerfully about what is the nature of our work as members of one another. But then below that is the mission statement of this particular congregation. It was the session retreat in 2001. We were down at the Beach Ridge Conference Center down in Ryland, Kentucky. We had agreed as a session that we were going to write a new mission statement. We were looking for the right words to get the ball rolling. One of the elders said, doesn't it say somewhere in the Bible, the love of God compels us? <laughs> I don't know if you've had this feeling very often. Every eye in the room turned toward me. I mean, I'm the resident biblical guy. I should know stuff like that, right? So I'm fumbling through my Bible thinking, oh, Lord, save me. When Chris Cochran, one of the elders, said, oh, it's right here, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. And after that, our facilitator encouraged the elders to think of words. He actually called them buckets, which would hold in them what we do as a church. And that part came easily to the session. Worship, learn, serve. And then we wordsmith the paragraph, which is our mission statement. The love of Christ compels us to worship, learn, and serve as a Christ-centered community inviting all to share a relationship with God. This morning's scripture reminding us that we are members of one another brings the focus back to the community that God is building here, a church family caring about one another, loving neighbors, loving God. Or as Burley Coulter put it so, well, so simply, the way we are, we are members of each other, all of us, everything. The difference ain't in who's a member and who is not, but who knows it and who don't. One of my favorite Wendell Berry books is entitled Jaber Crow. The subtitle of that book is The Membership of Port William. At first glance, it's a study of one particular man. But in looking at the one, we see the whole community. We see how the members of the community are at its disposal. How they've given over all they have to its needs and to one another. They are implicated in each other's lives. Most notably, we recognize how the community also supports the individual. 
And what's really key in these stories that he tells, the brokenness of a particular individual is not their exclusion from the membership, but rather that is most certainly the place where new life begins. That's in part because since the early days of the church, Jesus reminded us that while we are very much in the world, we're not of the world. But our membership suffers losses and feels them deeply. The metaphor of the community, the small town, the farming community that Wendell Berry remembers well, he has Burley Coulter talk about how that came to fall down a bit. It was Burley Coulter, a leading participant in the Port William membership, who told of the time when it all went wayward, when the idea of place came under attack. And Burley says, and now look at how many are gone. The mold they were made in done thrown away. The young ones dead in the wars or killed in damned automobiles or gone off to college and made too smart to ever come back or gone off to bright lights and ain't gonna work in the sun ever again if they can help it. It was Jesus himself speaking to the disciples in John 14 who said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And in today's gospel, also in John, Jesus said, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. But to be members of one another, to know it and to live it, is not to expect that eternal life that Jesus speaks of as some far off concept, something beyond this life. It begins here and now. It begins when we step toward God, stepping toward one another. What each of the scriptures today, and perhaps the whole witness of the gospel is about, emphasizes what it is to be whole, to be fully alive in Jesus Christ. It flies in the face of the individuality that is preached so fervently in the world around us. It's a matter of embracing the connectedness we have to God and to one another, and recognizing at times how hard that is. In a speech that Wendell Berry gave about 20 years ago to a conference on spirituality and healing, he said, if we were lucky enough as children to be surrounded by grown-ups who loved us, then our sense of wholeness is not just the sense of completeness in ourselves, but also is the sense of belonging to others and to our place. It is an unconscious awareness of community, of having in common. It may be that this double sense of singular integrity and communal belonging is our personal standard of health for as long as we live. Anyhow, we seem to know instinctively that health is not divided. The brokenness of the world we live in is in its division and disintegration. But to be members of one another is to grow smarter and more loving and more human in spite of it all. We are led out of lonely suffering and made whole precisely where the need of the community is met by what we have to offer. Or to quote another one of my heroes, Fred Beekner. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. What appeals to me about church, like the Port William membership of Barry's writings, is the sense that we remember that they used to be pretty close to getting it right. And if we work together, we're going to find it again. 
and it's most visible in the characters we embrace in our shared story. Characters like Burley Coulter. Wendell Berry once wrote, the whole story of Burley Coulter will never be known, let alone told. And at the end, that's true for all of us. And yet, it begins anew on days like today, when we baptize, when we ask one another to help this child grow in the faith, when we remember in the most powerful way possible that we are members of one another. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for drawing us together, for drawing us to yourself. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen.